My name is Mark Levy. I'm teaching mathematics at Penn State. And uh, today I would like to describe two uh, counterintuitive phenomena in mechanics, one of which everybody knows. Uh, that's a gyroscope and the other may be less familiar. And uh, the reason I chose those two things to show is uh, that they are both explained in an unexpected way by the same thing that everybody knows, the centrifugal force. So let me show you the first uh, experiment. So let's see what happens when I turn the jigsaw on. Uh, the pendulum seems to behave as if an invisible spring appeared which tries to line it up with the direction of vibration. Let me show uh, a slightly better experiment that I videotaped a while ago. Here is, it's an illustration that there is no trick, no springs. Now the jigsaw is turned on. And now I'm lifting it and it can stay in a horizontal position. And you see, by the way it oscillates, that it wants to line up as if there was a spring. Now, uh, think for a minute and see if you can explain how this uh, surprising thing happens. How does the pendulum oscillate around the vertical position? Now I give the solution to this puzzle. Uh, that after, with that uh, little joke out of the way, uh, I want to now finally explain how does this uh, uh, stabilization happen? What keeps the pendulum up? And the answer in the two words is a centrifugal force. So here is the picture. The little segment uh, is the path of the pivot up and down, up and down, with great, great frequency, with enormous acceleration. And because the acceleration is enormous, the force on the mass, which is at the tip, which is a very small dot, that's the mass. I assume that all the mass of the pendulum is in that point, just to simplify the discussion. The force on this little mass is enormous, so it wouldn't be too much of a sin to say that the mass moves in the direction of the force. Well, if it does, then the mass will trace out the green curve, as the movie shows. But any mass that moves in a curve exerts a centrifugal force, which is shown by the arrow. It doesn't like to go in a curved path by inertia. Uh, that's called, in this case, the centrifugal force. So we discover that if we innocently constrained our mass to a green curve, it's going to resist with this force. And that explains why the pendulum wants to line up in the direction of the arrow. One can say this is very non-rigorous mathematically, but if one converts this intuitive discussion into a formal proof, which I will skip, but just to give an idea, this is how short the uh, uh, discussion is. The question is, uh, what does it take to make the pendulum stand upside down? For that, this centrifugal force must beat gravity. To cut the long, st well, the, the short story even shorter, that very quickly gives a condition on the speed of the pivot, rather the average speed of the pivot, the length of the rod, and the gravitational acceleration. If this inequality holds, then the pendulum is stable. This is the length of the derivation. Now, this is uh, not exactly rigorous, but it gives the correct answer that mathematically takes uh, uh, essentially an upper undergraduate level course to understand. So to cut uh, to the end, uh, this part of the discussion explains in a way why, what's really going on. It's very short, requires little background, and it suggests also this uh, idea of the pole trap, which was discovered, of course, before I came up with this idea, but Nevertheless, it's uh, a way to suspend the charged particles in uh, electric field by vibrating the electric field. 
And the idea is somewhat similar. The electron or the positively charged particle wants to travel along the lines of electric field. And if these lines are curved, then there is a centrifugal force that drives the particle as shown in the direction of this arrow. And uh, so the particle can be suspended in a vacuum like this. And if you vibrate honey in a jar in the same way, an even more surprising thing happens, uh, that honey doesn't pour out. It stays uh, in the upside down jar on the bottom of the jar, which is now the top. So here's another example. When you vibrate it, it, sto it doesn't stop. But as soon as you turn it off, the liquid pours down. So there is no trick. It's an actual honey. So I would like to show another example of uh, a centrifugal force having a counterintuitive manifestation. And that's a well-known uh, example of the gyroscope, which in our case is just the bicycle wheel. So when I spin it up, it begins to behave in a very strange way. When I suspend it, it doesn't fall. But instead, it slowly precesses. And the question is, what keeps it up? And the answer is the centrifugal force. But it's not the centrifugal force that first comes to mind when one speaks of a spinning wheel. Rather, it's the following. So here is a slow motion. Uh, my wheel spins so that the white mark goes towards you. And at the same time, the wheel precesses like this. So that means that the mass, uh, the mass of this white thing executes a curved path. In addition, of course, to spinning around the center, it curves like this. And therefore, it exerts a certain centrifugal force that is in the direction of my index finger. And it's this force that keeps the gyroscope up. That's the short answer. Why doesn't the gyroscope fall? Another thing I could mention that's fun is it's very difficult to turn a rapidly rotating wheel, one might think. Let's say I wanted to turn it uh, like this. If I just by brute force do it, it's very, very hard. But I can do it very easily by pushing it in the direction perpendicular to the desired so let me push on this point up. I'm going to increase the pressure up, and this hand will push it down. You see how the wheel responds? I try to turn it around the line from me to you. But instead, the wheel responds by turning in the orthogonal direction. Again, I push. See? It turns perpendicular to how you force it. So this also reminds of some kids. And it's a way to manipulate the wheel and some people. Uh, so that's the uh, uh, underlying uh, mechanism of the gyroscope. Uh, it has uh, this idea has a wonderful application uh, called Sperry's uh, gyro compass. It uses Earth as rotation to find the north, the geographic north, not the magnetic one. And it's a very simple thing. You simply mount the spinning wheel, the gyroscope, on a floating dish, on a dish that floats in water or is easy to turn. And because the whole dish rotates with the Earth, it is like my fingers uh, rotating this axle. And just like that bicycle wheel responded to my trying to turn it, that whole assembly responds to the Earth trying to turn it, and the axle uh, points uh, along the north-south direction. So this completes my uh, presentation. And uh, now we understand why does a spinning top not fall. This idea of the inverted pendulum being stabilized by vibration uh, is an old one. It's over 100 years old. Stevenson in 1908. Uh, 
discovered that uh, the pendulum can be stabilized by vibrating its pivot. I should also say that uh, much of what I discussed may look uh, n may not look like mathematics. Uh, it's centrifugal force, uh, jigsaw, <laughs> pendulum, uh, gyroscope, but all these uh, problems are really uh, tips of an iceberg, which is uh, differential geometry, differential equations, calculus, of course. And the beauty of this subject is that uh, it is very multifaceted. Uh, somebody who is interested in uh, more in physical aspects can uh, pay attention to these manifestations that I discussed. Somebody who is interested in mathematical aspects can uh, study the more technical details, which I completely swept under the rug. And uh, so this is a wide field which still has many open questions. And uh, just to mention one example, the pole trap, which I had mentioned briefly, uh, was discovered in 1956, which is uh, not that terribly long ago. And this uh, discovery, in fact, earned a Nobel Prize and uh, just understanding why the inverted pendulum is stabilized probably would have led to this discovery much earlier if uh, Paul had access to this centrifugal uh, force explanation that I discussed. As it happened, I uh, was toying with this uh, pendulum and uh, this idea of the curvature came and then I got excited because I thought, well, I could stabilize charged particles by vibrating electric field. And I told this story, this to Steve Strogatz, and uh, Steve told me, well, this sounds like the pole trap. So I was 50 years too late. So uh, thank you for watching.